Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful spooky day, as is every day I hope you are this month. It is October, Vlogoween continues, and today we are starting with my personal, my personal, favorite horror movies, and I have so many, so many that I separated this into three parts. Three parts. So this is part one of my favorite top ten scary movies. These movies are not in any particular order. I just kind of whatever I thought of for each one I put them down. And I'm very excited. I'm very excited about this whole month. But I'm very excited about this, because I can talk about scary movies forever, forever and ever and ever. Without further ado, let's get started. Death has come to your little town, Sheriff. My first one, not number one, but it's the one that I'm talking about first, is of course Halloween. You have to have Halloween. Oh, I just saw some lightning outside. And there's the thunder as I said Halloween. I'm also going to be starting these with a quote acted by me very poorly. But I like quoting horror movies so I'm going to start each one with a quote and the tagline from the movie. Some of them I found, some of them I couldn't find. So Halloween from 1978 I think? Yeah, 1978 is the year that I'm doing this one, the OG Halloween. I watch it every single Halloween. The tagline for it is The Night He Came Home, which is kind of interesting because I guess I, I never thought he was in a, a sane asylum that wasn't in the hometown, but I guess he was in a sane asylum that wasn't in the home, hometown. But you can't have Halloween without Halloween can't. You, you probably can. For you, I can't. I can't have Halloween <laughs> without Halloween. Michael is iconic, obviously. He's very iconic. He, he doesn't even have to run after you. It's the feel of if he'll get there eventually, he will get to you eventually. <laughs> which, I, saying it out loud almost doesn't sound terrifying, but just that walk, that slow walk because you know he's coming you know he's coming and it just feels I don't know it feels good it feels like hollow the carving of the pumpkins and I always watch it after like the trick-or-treaters have done their thing I watch the movie and it just feels I don't know it just feels right Halloween is just an absolute must for me so Halloween is in case you haven't seen it I know it's very rare to have someone not have seen the movie, but there are some people who are being introduced to these movies today, especially with all the remakes. People have probably seen the remake and not know that there's an original. It's gonna happen. It feels like for us in our age and our parents, it feels like it's you, like no one's ever not seen these movies, but they're gonna be out there. So Halloween is about a man who was, when he was a boy, he murdered his sister. <laughs> And so now he's back, he escaped from his insane asylum, and he's wreaking havoc in the town that he lived in. And we follow... Why did I forget her name? Jamie Lee Curtis. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, we follow Jamie Lee Curtis's character dealing with the boogeyman, essentially. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Night of the Living Dead is next, 1968, the original. A lot of these have remakes and it kind of makes me sad, like really sad. I'm not, I'm not a remake kind of gal. There are very few that I do like, Night, but Night of the Living Dead, the first not known zombie, but it, it, it bred the zombie that we see today, the, 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 coming from the ground 
undead eating the living kind of zombies. We've had like voodoo zombies, like white zombie in the past, but Night of the Living Dead was the first time you saw every type of zombie that you see today. When you think of zombie and the image that you have in your head when you think of it, that's thanks to George A. Romero, Night of the Living Dead. The tagline for this movie is, they won't stay dead, <laughs> which is kind of great, because again, it, it was born, it bred the, it's born, it's born. <laughs> it gave us the zombie that we know today, and when it first came out, they told him, you can't, you can't show this. And he's like, yeah, I can. And he did, and it horrified everyone. That's what it's supposed to do, it's a horror movie. And it doesn't have the best acting in it, of course, but... It's still, I don't know, I just, it's, it's so great. <laughs> I'm going to be probably stuttering a lot because I'm just getting very excited about every one of them. So just bear with me on my <laughs> bad acting quotes and my stutters. I don't feel like I sh have to explain what Night of the Living Dead is about. It's about zombies. <laughs> and it follows a group of people trying to just survive and hold out until they figure out what to do next. They're kind of trapped in the house that they're in because the house is surrounded by zombies and Barbara it's like her her fear was this happening and it's like oh that sucks <laughs> and it happens so she's just totally spaced because of the zombies and then Johnny I don't want to talk about Johnny but Johnny and all these people they're, they they can't communicate with each other and it's it's very real if there's anything catastrophic happening people tend to to bump heads a lot which sucks and the movie shows that it has the zombies but it shows the characters just colliding as they're trying to just stay safe next on this list is the strangers i didn't want to do the quote that everyone always thinks of, even though it's great, like that's, ugh, it's great. But if you haven't seen the movie, I'm not gonna spoil something that, that's just so, ugh, the stabbing in the movie. And everyone says that quote because it's great, but I'm not gonna say that quote. So the tagline for this movie is, we tell ourselves there's nothing to fear, but sometimes we're wrong. And this movie was made in 2008, and it is a home invasion movie, and my goodness, is it a good in home invasion movie. It's so good because you th it, it could happen to you. It could definitely happen to you. So this is about a couple, and they go into a cabin, and it was supposed to be very romantic. Asked, he asked her to marry him. She said no. And so as, as they're at this cabin, just in their awkwardness, kind of, um, a girl knocks on the door and asks if Tamara's home. No, there's no Tamara, and then it just escalates, and there's three masked people, and they come in, and they just wreak havoc, and it's, it's, it's horrifying, horrifying, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, he's right, he's just right there behind her. It's it's the, the cliche of like, turn around, he's right behind you. But we, it's, it's new, it's a new, it's putting the old cliche into something new aged. And it works so well. It works so, because he's just watching her. And you can't do anything about it. She can't do anything about it. The next movie is Cujo. I have never seen a top 10 talk about Cujo, and maybe it's like, because it's not scary. It's it's pretty horrifying. Your puppy dog that you love so much turns on you? That's awful. I say puppy dog, but he's huge. He's a St. Bernard. He's the biggest. He's, oh my gosh, he's massive. 
the tagline for this movie is Terror Has a New Name. This movie came out in 1983. And it is so good. I'm going to say that about all of these. It's so good. <laughs> it's a movie adapted by a Stephen King book. Of course. Like a lot of these classic, classic, classic 2.0 horror movies. Cujo is about a St. Bernard who's apparently the nicest St. Bernard, nicest dog you'll ever meet. And he gets bit by a bat. <laughs> He's in a bunny rabbit. And he gets bit by a bat and gets rabies. Uh, this woman that's in the movie and her son they are trapped in a car and their car is broken down because they were going to get it fixed by the mechanic. The mechanic owned Cujo. Cujo the mechanic didn't didn't mix well with rabies. And so now she's in her car with her son. And the car is broken down and her son has asthma. He's having an asthma attack. He doesn't have it as an inhaler for some reason and they can't get out. A naked American man stole my balloons. <laughs> I didn't even attempt to do an accent, but I love that line so much. <laughs> a naked American man stole my balloons. The movie I am talking about is An American Werewolf in London. Oh my gosh. The tagline for this movie is Beware the Moon. It came out in 1981. It is known, and it, I agree with this statement, to have one of the best on-screen werewolf transformations in all of filmmaking. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, I've, I'm sure a clip will be showing of it that I have put on here. And it is. It's so good. The makeup is amazing. I'm a makeup, special effects makeup junkie. And that, that scene is great. So it's about a man with his friend and they went on vacation. One of them gets attacked by a werewolf. Doesn't go well. <laughs> the other one gets like kind of messed up a little bit like scratched and stuff by the werewolf. It doesn't go well for him either because he, he's now the werewolf and so he's conflicted because his dead friend is telling him like you need to deal with this being a werewolf. I'm doing really awful with describing these movies that you probably already know. But I just don't want to give away too much. Uh, it's just a great movie, and the scene that I love is the scene that everybody loves with the werewolf transformation. Jesus Christ! Oh, I need the balloons. I'm a naked American man. You'll have to watch it. <laughs> just stole my balloons. <laughs> It's supposed to be a little funny. That's why I'm laughing, because it's a funny line. So it's it's not... I wouldn't call it a horror comedy, but it does have elements of comedy in it. Wait. <coughs> That's right. There's another tradition. <coughs> a very important one. <coughs> Always check your candy. <coughs> Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Our treat, not trick or treat, trick or treat. It's become very popular. It wasn't when it first came out, but it's become very, very popular. I hope you heard me and not like the loud claps. But as it should be popular, the tagline for this movie is poison, drowning, claw, or knife. So many ways to take a life. And I think that is. That sums up the whole movie. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just really... That really kind of talks about the whole movie almost. That's great. <laughs> this movie came out in 2007 and it just gives me the best Halloween feeling. It has... Although it is horror, like it, it's in no way family friendly. Some of you might say like, no, of course. And I don't... It's not family friendly. <laughs> don't show it to your five-year-old. Unless your five-year-old's like cool with it. I started watching horror movies when I was that age, but that's me. Um, it has elements of horror and scary with at the same time having that feeling of Halloween. You have the kids 
running around the neighborhood trick-or-treating, the look of it, the pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns everywhere, even with Sam, oh my gosh, Sam is the most adorable little menace that there ever was. Well, he is, he's like the spirit of Halloween, and if you break any rules, he will come after you. <laughs> and that, I don't know, I just think that's neat. He's cute. Oh, so the movie involves a series of stories that happen on Halloween night, and some of them overlap each other. And what I mean by overlap is some of them are happening at the same time, almost. I don't know, it's kind of weird. It's like they're happening at the same time, and what we saw at the beginning is like, the, I, I don't know, it's, it's neat, and I noticed that. But there's five stories, there's... There's ghosts and zombies and werewolves and I don't know, the Halloween, trick or treat. So for this one, I'm just gonna start with the tagline because I couldn't, I don't know, a quote didn't really pop out to me. I'm sure some of you will be like, no, there's this and that, but I, a quote didn't really pop up to me in this. So the tagline for this film is, in space, nobody can hear you scream. And I'm talking about Alien. Obviously. And alien. Alien, not aliens. Although aliens is cool. It is so cool. But that's what it is. It's a cool horror movie, not a horror horror movie. Well, alien is, is, it's scary. It really is. You're out in space all by yourself. No one's listening to you. So then everyone just, because no one's listening to you, nothing works. <laughs> I've noticed that. That everything that she says they're like, nah. It's stupid. So Alien is about a group of people traveling back home. I don't know where they're traveling back home from. I prob They probably said it and I just missed it. But they're traveling back home and they're in their cryosleep. And they get awakened from their cryosleep because of a distress signal that's happening. And so they check out the signal and they're on the... I don't know if it's a planet. I guess it's a planet... Um, where the distress signal is coming from, and Ripley, played by Sigourney Weaver, says she doesn't think it's a distress signal at all, she thinks it's a warning. And no one listens to her, and the face huggy thing, not thing, the face hugger, like, grabs the guy because the guy's sticking his face in the egg. I don't know why you would do that. There's an egg, and you're like, just don't... Not even if you don't even know it's an egg, like, it's something you're not aware of what it is. Don't put your face in things. Sucks on his face. They take him back in, even though she said no, that he's not allowed back on board, which is smart protocol, but they let him back in, and we all know about the f chest bursty thing. That's awesome. And it creates a little baby xenomorph. And then you get the big xenomorph. <laughs> because they can grow within hours to, to full adulthood. And they can grow... I've read like 8 feet tall. I'm read as if they're real. Like 8 feet tall. But they can get bigger. Like not, not it being a queen or a warrior. I'm very into this movie. So now they're having to deal with getting rid of the alien that is aboard their ship. And there are so many scenes that people talk about that are scary. My favorite is the first time that you see the alien in the director's cut when they're looking for the cat Jonesy. Oh my gosh, like it it doesn't sound like it would be horrifying, but it is. I I it, I think it's just because it's not a jump scare because after you have the initial like oh of a jump scare you can relax you can calm in this one you're just you're just tense the whole time because you see it and you know it's there but he doesn't know it's there and you're just sitting there like <sighs> but the subtleness of the scares are great absolutely great and that was made in 1979 I don't think I said that before I'm trying to give all the years just I don't know I think it's interesting to give the year these came out 1979. We're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> that was pretty good. Next we have Carrie. I, I, they're all gonna laugh at you. 
They're all gonna laugh. Oh, it's that's it's so sad. <laughs> The tagline for Carrie is, if you've got a taste for terror, take Carrie to the prom. Carrie was made in 1976, and it is obviously a horror movie, but it's also just really sad. I feel so bad for Carrie, and I feel for her so much, because people are mean and cruel, her mom's psycho. So Carrie's about a girl who is very... Reclu reclusive? I'm really bad with pronouncing things. Reclusive. And she keeps to herself. She's very shy. She seems to have social anxiety. Like, major social anxiety. And her home life is not good. Her mother is super religious. And I, I, I think it's kind of obvious when you start to watch it that it's just because her mother has done some bad things. And so she's... I don't know. She's gone crazy with it. And with religion. And she's shoving it down Carrie's throat. And that's not how you do things. She doesn't have any friends. Everyone at school picks on her. And I don't get it. I don't get why. I just It's just sad. Bullying is awful. And so Carrie has powers where she can move things with her mind. <laughs> and it happens, it seems like at first under like, ex like stress or whenever she's upset about something, she can move things with her mind. And so these this couple well it's really the girl who decides for her boyfriend to take Carrie to the prom just so Carrie can experience the prom. I gotta go to the prom. <laughs> That's great. That's fantastic. I, it's nice. Like her heart was in the right place, but I can see how someone would be upset by it. I can see how that would almost be insulting, but I think her heart was in the right place, and so that's basically a lot of it if you haven't seen the original. I haven't seen the remake at all. I'm not going to. Sorry. But I, I say giving the original a, a look at. It's... I don't do justice with describing any of these movies, but I do suggest that you watch them on your own time, because these are movies that are a must, a must watch. At least a few of these on my list. Some of them are not a must watch, but a good few are, and Carrie being one of them, for sure. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep. A Nightmare on Elm Street is next on this list. The original from 1984. I believe it's 1984. I have actually seen the remake to this, and I'm sorry if this makes you upset, and I know it's probably kind of harsh, but it's trash. The remake is trash. I don't even really want to get into why it's, it's, I don't like it, but the original, it's great. The tagline for this movie is, if Nancy doesn't wake up screaming, she won't wake up at all. So A Nightmare on Elm Street, for those of you who don't know, is about a group of kids who all have, the, not the same dream, but they all have nightmares with the same man in it. Freddy Krueger, which a lot of you, I know this seems like, yeah, we know, but some, again, some of you might not know, named Freddy Krueger, and he haunts them all in their dreams, and if he kills you in your dreams, you die in real life. So we follow, it's mainly Nancy that we follow, it's happening to her friends too, but we mainly follow Nancy and her trying to figure out who he is, <laughs> along with not falling asleep, to falling asleep to try and stop everything that's happening. It is also Johnny Depp's film debut. I know some of you probably know that. I'm sure most of you do. But I remember I didn't know that until I was in high school and I had seen this movie forever and already knew who Johnny Depp was but didn't put the connection. That's just, I, I don't know, maybe I'm not the smartest person in the world. But I didn't put the connection and I don't read credits. <laughs> that's bad. I should. But it's his debut, and that's awesome, because he's in a horror movie. That's great. What an excellent day for an exorcism. Last, but not least, is, and I can't believe, I can and can't believe it, but it's The Exorcist. <laughs> ah! 
ah, I'm going ah because I know that I'm going to have to edit this while looking at a lot of images and clips from the movie. <laughs> so I'm going to read the tagline, but I'm going to read it from my notes because I can't, I'm sure I could memorize it, but I don't want to really memorize it that much, so I'm going to grab my notes and read the tagline for you. Something almost beyond comprehension is happening to a girl on this street in this house and a man has been sent for as a last resort. This man is the exorcist. And this movie came out in 1973 with little Linda Blair as Reagan. So this movie is about <laughs> a girl and her mom and the girl plays with the Ouija board for some reason. And I forgot the name that she says this thing. She she says like someone talks to her and her mom thinks it's an imaginary friend. It's like Captain something, I think. I can't remember the name, but I think it starts with Captain. So the mom's like, oh, how silly. Like you have a little imaginary friend. And then just the craziest things start happening to Reagan. And it's like obviously she's freaking demon inside of her. But like even things that aren't as extreme are pretty extreme. Like, she comes downstairs and, like, she just starts wetting herself. Like, that's, like, one of the first signs of something's happening. They think something's wrong with, like, her brain. And so they take her to the hospital. And it's just... I don't know. It's it's insane. And so, of course, the mother has a priest come in. Because it is a last resort. She's obviously starting to realize this is beyond medical. There's no way this is anything medical at all. So the priest comes in and it affects him because he's having some trouble with his day-to-day, -day, with his religion. I don't know, it's all sorts of crazy. It, it, it's all sorts of messed up. I saw this when I was very young. I think I was about eight years old. I wasn't supposed to, but my sister showed it to me <laughs> anyways. And although I, I hated it in a sense, I also loved it. This is what kicked off my love for horror movies. I don't know what it was I guess the way it made me, it's, I don't know, it's, that's, I want to say I guess because the way it made me feel, but most people would not like that. I don't know, I really can't explain it, but it, it was my gateway to horror movies, and so that's why it's on this list, as not only as a classic 2.0, as I said earlier, but it's the first horror movie I ever saw. So that is it for this top 10 list. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got through it with all of my awkwardness, bad acting, gibberish <laughs> that I was doing throughout the whole thing. Um, there will be a part two coming tomorrow and I hope you are excited for that. I am. I'm very excited for that. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so down below. You can also leave a comment or a like if you've please, you can do so below. You can also follow me on my other social media. They will be linked down below as well. And thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one tomorrow. Bye!